types of solids. There are many categories of solids that have different general properties. These categories are based on the type of atoms or molecules making up the solid and the intermolecular forces or the bonds that are holding them together. So in this video, we're going to learn about the various types of solids, what forces form the crystal structure, and how these relate to their melting points. We haven't exactly talked about crystal structures yet, and that's okay, we'll do that later on. Let's start with molecular solids. These are individual molecules that are held together by intermolecular forces. Things like ice, or butter, or dry ice. They retain their individual molecular structures, just like in a liquid or a gas, but they're going to be held together by dipole-dipole, dispersion, or hydrogen bonding. You may want to go review the videos on intermolecular forces if you don't remember that from a while ago. To melt these, all that it takes is overcoming intermolecular forces. So they are generally pretty low melting temperature solids. Even strong intermolecular forces tend to be relatively weak in comparison to actual bonds. Water is a bit of an exception, and we know that water has an atypically high boiling point, and this is because of how strong its hydrogen bonding is. Now we'll look at ionic bonding. These are made up of cations and anions. Things like table salt or Epsom salts fall into this category. Since melting these require breaking ionic bonds, they tend to have very high melting temperatures. The last category has three subcategories. Atomic solids are made up of individual atoms instead of molecules. There are non-bonding atomic solids, which have very low melting temperatures because they are only held together by dispersion forces, and we know that dispersion forces tend to be quite weak, and they're especially weak when things are small. So if you're talking about an atomic solid held together by dispersion forces, each individual atom is going to have pretty small forces. The next type is metallic bonds. These form a sea of electron clouds, and you learned about this a bit in 1A. Because of the large range of types of metallic bonds, these can have either a very high or a low melting temperature. And you might be thinking of many of the metals that you know that are quite hard to melt, but there's also metals that you can hold in your hand and melt. Finally, we have network covalent compounds. These have covalent bonds that are linking each atom together. They generally have very high melting points because of the covalent bonding is so strong. These include things like quartz or diamond or graphite. You can identify the type of solid based on the composite atoms, molecules, or ions, and then use that to tell how likely the melting temperatures are to be high or low, and perhaps even rank atoms or molecules in relationship to their melting temperatures. There are definitely some situations where you might not be able to tell which is which, but we're not going to give you any strange exceptions when it comes to an exam. So let's do an example. Compare the given species that I have here and decide which has the highest melting temperature. We want to identify the type of solid for each one. So take a minute before moving on and for each solid, identify which type of solid it is. Let's start at the top. For water, we have a molecular solid. Water is a molecule. These generally have low melting temperatures, though we know that water is our obvious exception and is quite a bit higher than normal. You know it's higher because of its high intermolecular forces. It's dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding. Now we also have MGS. That's an ionic solid. These and network covalent solids are generally our two highest melting temperatures. So whenever you see ionic or network covalent, think really high melting temperatures. Now we also have Xe. That is only held together by very weak dispersion forces. And finally, we have gold, which is a metal. That's held together with metallic bonding, which has a very wide range. So these are variable, but we can still make some generalities and take a guess about which one is most likely to have our highest value. 
Generally, as mentioned, ionic and network covalent have our highest. And so in this case, we would think that magnesium sulfide is probably going to be our highest melting temperature. We could also say which one's going to be our lowest, and that's perhaps the easier question here. Here, our lowest is going to be our non-bonding atomic species. So that would be xenon. So in review, we have our three main groups of solids, molecular, ionic, and atomic. And for atomic solids, we have three subgroups, non-bonding, metallic, and network covalent. You should be able to identify molecules or atoms and which type of solids they belong to. And then within reason, be able to guess or estimate or approximate which is most likely to have the highest or lowest melting temperatures if given a selection of these.